from the Leaders Factory comes Leadership Secrets with Dr. Michael Huttonwood, designed to help you maximize your potential with principles that guarantee proven results. Knowing and cultivating certain attitudes about yourself will give you the mindset you need to develop your leadership potential to the fullest and fulfill all that you are born to do. Join Dr. Michael Huttonwood for Leadership by Creativity, Principles for Success, Secrets for Creating Change, and much more. You are born to lead. Jesus came to restore you back to leadership. Get back your leadership position. Let the earth know that you were here. Join your host, Dr. Michael Huttonwood, a man on a mission, and experience a destiny-changing encounter counter with today's message on leadership secret join us for three hours of non-stop prayer and expect power favor healings anointing the word business and career and marriage breakthroughs prophecies miracles signs and wonders date first saturdays of every month time 9 a.m to 12 noon uk time venue house of judah the happy church first floor palm Corey house 387 london road Croydon, CRO 3PB UK. Visit www.houseofjuda.org.uk. For further inquiries, call 0208-689-6010. The dangers of working carelessly for the Lord. The dangers of working carelessly for the Lord. Can we pray? Father, I am your servant. Speak through me, bless through me, touch through me, transform through me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Your bishop is one of the most outstanding. We have known each other for nearly 20 years. Your bishop and his wife and his family are part of us. I am, I am not a visiting pastor. I'm, I'm the co-pastor co uh, of this church. Amen. I can come in here anytime and preach. And it is the only church that I have given my title to the bishop. And then I come into his pulpit and say, I have changed it. I'm preaching on something else. Just preaching on something else because I am the co pastor of this church. Amen. Uh, anytime they are in Ghana, they are in our church. And he also speaks in our church on any topic because he's my twin brother in ministry. And we are very honored that we are, we are part of this family. And we don't take our friendship for granted. This association, we don't take it for granted. You are very, very, you are a very good man. And you have a very good wife and a very good man. And um, when I'm around you, I feel very inspired very very inspired and um, even if you stop being my twin brother i will look for whoever becomes your twin brother to become a brother to that person <laughs> amen <laughs> amen so i'm speaking on the dangers of working carelessly for the lord can i share with you my covenant secret with the lord one day i was so I, 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 I run a university. I have the Accra Business School. When you finish, take your time and Google Accra Business School. It's one of the top most business schools in Ghana. And uh, we've had the vice president of Ghana speaking on our platform recently. We had a former president of Ghana speaking at our graduation. Now, and um, so I'm, I'm telling you a little about myself because I believe in a law I call the law of legitimacy. You cannot speak on what you have not successfully practiced. Some time ago, the Lord told me that if we talk about Moses, Abraham, David, Peter, uh, Paul in your sermon, and you say nothing about yourself, then you have preached the wrong sermon because you cannot preach why you have not practiced. Okay? So, so I host these big guys, Jim. Um, John Mahamas recently spoke at our um, at, at our graduation. The president of Accra Business School is an Oxford, a retired Oxford professor. 
years ago, the Lord told me when our church was in a wooden structure and I was living as a poor man, the Lord said, very soon you are going to employ white people. And the number of white professors who want to come to Ghana to work with me is amazing. Alan Foster, who is a member of the House of Lords and until recently was the first minister of Northern Ireland. In other words, he was the prime minister of Northern Ireland met me and he's asking, I want to come to Ghana. I want to visit your school. I want to do something um, with, with you. We are setting up the Ghana Ireland Chamber of Education because the former education minister of um, Republic of Ireland said, I want to meet this, this bishop doing amazing things with education in, in Africa. It's just an amazing thing. But I want to share my secret with you. I was born, my father was a minister in the Methodist Church in Ghana and made some mistakes and went to prison for it. When I was born, my father had become a beggar. We begged on the streets of Ghana. So I grew up as a beggar's son. 23 years ago, where I have a university, I was a squatter. I was living in an uncompleted building, no water, no electricity, no toilet facility. How did the beggar's son become one of the most influential people in Ghana, rated as among the 100 most influential people in Ghana. How did that happen? I want to share my secret with you. And I believe that that can happen to you. Amen. You can become anything you want to become if you can, you can follow what I'm going to teach you right now. So a few years ago, I started a training organization. It was called the African Center for, for Leadership and Human Resource Development. And as we grew, we had to buy property. So we bought a property. And within that month that we bought the property, I realized that I didn't have money to pay my staff. So in the middle of the night, I've gotten up. I'm very good with the development, with the development of course content. So in the middle of the night, I, had, I was developing a course content to, to advertise the next day for a short course to be able to raise money to pay my staff. It was around 2 a.m. Whilst I was working, the Lord asked me, what are you doing? I said, I'm working. He said, who are you working for? And I was stunned. Who are you working for? And then he answered, they said, you are working for your staff. He said, this particular thing you are doing, you are doing it because you want to raise money for your staff. He said, you see, you see your staff members are asleep. And you are here at 2 a.m. working for them. Then he asked me, do you know why they are asleep and you are working for them? I said, no, Lord, I don't know. He said, because they work for you. He said, you are working for them because they work for you. Are you hearing me? You are working for them because they do what? They work for you. Then the Lord said to me, if you work for me, I will work for you. He said, if you work for me, I will work for you. So it's been my covenant relationship with the Lord. During the COVID, when the business has shut down, I built a twin tower of seven floors each for the university in two years. Then the government sent the revenue authorities to my office for six months to investigate how I was able to raise money to build twin towers in two years in the midst of COVID. They wanted to find out, was I receiving some money from somewhere that I'm not disclosing? Do I have a strange income I'm not disclosing? Six months, they were in my office. When they finished, they found nothing. And when they were leaving my office, they told my accountant, we found nothing in the books, but we still doubt how you could build this with the monies we saw in the books. Then my accountant said to them, well, the man says that he works for God and God works for him. Yeah. And the, the contractor who was building, one point came to the site and said, Bishop, you know something? I didn't think I left this building in this state yesterday. Yes, 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 it, looks like, it looks like something has been added to it. Yeah, yes, yes. Then I told him that, well, I work for God and God works for me. Yes, Are you here? 
Now, I travel, I come here, I meet people, and then we sign deals. We have a partnership with the universities in Ireland and here in the UK. One time, one pastor who was a university in Ghana, who used to live in this country, called me and said, how do you do it? I said, I don't know. I work for God, and God works for me. That is all. I work for God, and God works for me. Two years ago again, my wife and I were I was just walking. I was just going for a walk, and I saw two buildings were being advertised for sale. Then I, the guy who was working with me, I said to the guy, I'm going to buy this place, and we are going to break this building down, and we'll build a church here for the Lord. So we kept walking every time, and then he said, Daddy, if you don't buy it, this is a prime location. Somebody will buy it. I said, I don't have the money yet, but until I get the money to buy it, nobody can buy it. Yes. Eight months later, we bought those two buildings for $600,000. Then I imported a tent from China for $200,000. And in, 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 so I bought, it in, I bought it in October. By, by February the next year, the place was set up. Now, people came and said, this place was dry. There were some buildings here. And suddenly we come back here and we see this here. How did you do it? I said, I work for God and God works for me. I said, I work for God and God works for me. So I want to tell you something, eh? Most of us, we have devoted our lives working for ourselves. And we are not getting the results we are looking for. We are not getting the results. Okay, so we have are, we are devoted time working for ourselves. And let me tell you something. See, the Christ, okay, everybody look here. Don't, don't worry about those who are just coming in. You'll find a place to sit. Now, the Christian life is a supernatural life. Okay, it's a supernatural life. You, you didn't become a Christian to remain the same. You became a Christian for something to happen. Yeah. And I want to show you that my covenant secret with the Lord is that as I work for God, God works for me. Okay, and I'm going to show you something. So, the dangers of working carelessly for the Lord. So, you can also pretend to be working for the Lord, but you may be working carelessly for the Lord. I want to read a scripture that changed my mind. Jeremiah 48, verse 10. We are reading from the New American Bible. Okay? Jeremiah 48, verse 10. The New American Bible. Hear this. Cursed are they who do the, the Lord's work carelessly. Cursed are they who do the Lord's work carelessly. It is scary, eh? It is scary not to work for the Lord. Being a Christian, not to work for the Lord. But it's even more scary if you decide to work for him and you work carelessly. Join us for three hours of non-stop prayer and expect power, favor, healings, anointing, the word, business and career, and marriage breakthroughs, prophecies, miracles, signs and wonders. Date, first Saturdays of every month. Time, 9 a.m. to 12 noon, UK time. Venue, House of Judah, The Happy Church, First Floor Palm Croy House, 387 London Road, Croydon, CRO 3PB UK. Visit www.houseofjudah.org.uk. UK. For further inquiries, call 0208-689-6010. So you have to work for the Lord. You cannot just be a Christian and focus on yourself and do nothing for the Lord. You have to work for the Lord. And you have to work for... The secret of blessing is in working for the Lord. You have to do something for the Lord. You have to be involved in something for the Lord. You have to find something and do for the Lord. Amen? You have to find something and do for the Lord. You just, just, you just can't just decide that I am a member of this church, but I do nothing for the Lord. 
I just go to church. They preach to me. And then after that, I go home. Because my work is a very difficult work. I have to go to work in the early morning and I have to close late. Do they know how I feed my children? Do they know how, how, how I even pay my bills? And they are asking me to work for, to, to come and work for the church. We are not asking you to work for the church. We say work for the Lord. We are asking you to work for the Lord. Is that one very difficult? Is it so difficult to work for the Lord? Is it so difficult to make time for the Lord? Is it so difficult to say that, can I have 30 minutes every day to make phone calls and check on some sisters? Can I just reserve one hour a week and come to the church and do something? Can I just reserve 30 minutes a week and stand somewhere and tell somebody, Jesus loves you? Is that a difficult thing to do for the Lord? So where I'm living now, uh, there was a problem there, and they sent this Polish guy to come and face something there. And I almost feel guilty if somebody comes, and I'm not sure why the person is saved or not. Like when I met with Alan Foster, I had to bring in. I said, I said, there's something called reverse mission. I think that your churches are empty, and Africans, we are bringing the gospel back to you. And then she opened up for a discussion. I met Lord Traceman in the house of Lord. I have to tell him something about Jesus. You see, and, and you are there, and for a whole year, now this is, this is, we are in the second, the second month of the year is almost ending, and the person who sits close to you, and you work together, in the, you can discuss everything. You can discuss everything, except you can discuss football, you can discuss movies, you can discuss your boss, you can discuss those who are offending you, you can discuss everything. The only thing you can discuss is that Jesus loves you. This man doesn't live in this country, so he doesn't know what the things we go through. And he's asking us to work for the Lord. He's asking us to work for the Lord. I, I, does, he, does he know how I eat? Does he know how I clothe? Does he know how I pay fees? Does he know how I do these things? I don't know. I don't know. All I know is that if you work for the Lord, he will work for you. Yeah. 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 Listen, I don't have to know what you are going through to preach to you. Yeah. I don't have to. I don't have to know what you are going through to preach to you. But I'm, I've been sent here by the Lord yeah. to tell you and there's somebody here who has been struggling with this thing that I'm talking about. You are feeling guilty that you're not working for the Lord. And so the Lord sent me to you. Now Jesus said, a man went out to cast his seed, to, to sow. A farmer went out to sow. And then his seed, some fell on good soil, some fell on the rocky places, some fell among the tongues, and some fell on the, by the roadside. So you see, only 25% of the seed that was sown bore fruit. And the, boss, the seed is the word of God. So you see, when you preach, only 25% of people listening to you. So this sermon is for only 25% of some people here. It's for only 25% of the people here. How many of you are among the 25%? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I was not sent for everybody. I was sent for some few people here. 25% of the people here, I was sent for them. I wasn't sent for everybody. And I'm not here to preach what to... You see, I came here with a message called Becoming the Best You Can Be. But the Lord said, why are you going to tell them to be the best they can be when I want them to serve me? I want workers. I want workers. The fields are wide. The laborers are few. I want workers. I want workers. I want people that can work for me. The Lord said to me, tell them I want people that can work for me. And said, tell them how you have worked for me and I've blessed you. I've rained chairs in church before. Yeah. I've faced instruments before. I have done almost everything. The only thing I haven't done in church is that I haven't sung in the choir because I'm not a good singer. So when I come, I see Michael and Co singing. I ask the Lord, why are thou forsaking me, Lord? <laughs> why am I not singing, Lord? But I've done almost everything in church. As I sit, you sit here and there's 100 young pastors in my Bible school, 100 from across different nations of Africa. I give them stipends every weekend. 
free accommodation, free tuition, free everything. You know why? I am working for the Lord. I'm just working for the Lord. And the Lord is blessing me. See, if you work for me, I will work for you. If you work for me, I will work for you. You see the way I started preaching? Eh? If it were to be in Ghana, I would preach like this for three hours. For four hours. And people will be sitting, will be listening. You know what you people will do? You say in Ghana, they are praying and nothing is happening. And they come and see these people, they are not praying and everything is happening. You have nice things here. But we have nice people in Ghana. You see, let me tell you something. Life does not consist of the abundance of things a man has. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. There is a, there is a group in the house of lords who are interceding. They are white people. They are believers. They are interceding for this country. For you to sit down and say that, eh, if you go to Africa, not the empire ball, empire ball, and so how uh, a common they are dying there, and they are always saying prayer, 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 prayer. If we see the number of church buildings in this country, everywhere you drive, there is a church building. On this street alone, you find a number of church buildings. What we are dying to do in Africa this generation was done by the fathers of these people several generations ago. Yeah. I'm saying, I'm opening your eyes when you are driving. The kind of buildings. You are sitting down here, you are complaining. When you go to Africa, they are building. Everywhere there is church, everywhere. I'm telling you that there are more churches in this country than there are in Africa. Across here, across here, there's a church here. When you go a little, you see a church building. You go a church building. You see 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 a church building. Because this nation, their fathers worked for the Lord. Yes. That's why they are blessed. That's why they are a blessed nation. That's why they are a blessed nation. Do you know why I believe my children will be great? Because I'm working for the Lord. My children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, I'm working for the Lord. I'm working for the Lord. This man is a professional teacher. You could be in the classroom and by now you would have made more money. And nobody would have gossiped about him. Nobody would have said I was sick. You didn't come to visit me so I'm leaving the church. No, 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 no. But he left everything to work for the Lord. The wife is me working for the Lord. Children are working for the Lord. They are all working for the law. And then one day, one day, your grandchildren and their and your your grandchildren and their grandchildren will meet. And the difference will be there. It will be clear. The difference will be there. It will be clear. My daughter went to school with my Nissan Petrol big car. And then some people started gossiping. Hey, they didn't know I own a university. Yeah, you seen the church offering to buy cars for their children. Then she went very defensive. This is my father finances the church. My father owns this and we own this. And I say you have no, you don't, you don't owe anybody any explanation. When your father was born again planting churches, their fathers were drinking alcohol in some corner. They, they can't measure themselves with you. I have been young and now I am old. I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. You, you, know, you know why this nation, they are not begging for bread? You know why they are not begging for bread? You know why they are not begging for bread? Because they are the seed of the righteous. Yeah. I'm telling you, John Wesley and the guys. Yeah. They are the seed of the righteous. The work John Knox and Co. The work that they did here. The work that they did here. Read the religious history of this country. Why is the queen the head of England? The head of the Anglican church? Because of their Christian foundation. Because of their Christian foundation. Because of their Christian foundation. It is built on a solid biblical foundation. I went to the house of lords. And they were showing me the spiritual side and the physical side. I said, which is where I said, this is where the bishop sit. They took me to rooms where there's daily prayer going on. Where there's communion being served there. I was amazed. Because they were welcoming the bishop, they wanted to show me the spirituality of the house of lords. I was amazed. 
they took me to the queen's chamber they said oh it's not open to the public but the person taking me was the lord in waiting the lord in waiting is part of the royal family so he can enter there so he took me and my wife inside there to look at the so i saw the throne i mean not the one that you see the one that you don't see i saw it they took me there i saw it and i want to be president of ghana so 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 when they took me there i said lord i'm claiming i'm building yeah yeah and, but, but that's the reason why god is giving me connection in political corridors here when i declare my intention to run for presidency i get the support from here and all of you have to come those of you who are Ghanaians have to come back home and vote for me yeah yeah we can change the country yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. vice president are you here with me you understand what i'm sharing with you the bible said that curses everyone who does god's work carelessly now now i'm going to take the word carelessly as an acronym as a i think a 10 letter or 11 letter acro acronym and i'll teach you some i'm going to take only two and i'll teach you because in this country if you preach for long if you preach for long they will say you're not a good preacher so i want to preach for short I want you to just say something small. Then you go back the same way you came. In Africa, we want to tap the throne. We want to make sure that God is there. We want to make sure that we sing, we sing God. There's a song we sing there. I don't want to leave your presence just as I came. I don't want to leave your presence just as I came. No, when we sing those songs, then we come and kneel down. We sing, Lord, touch us before we go. And sometimes the preacher, you want to stop preaching. For three hours of non-stop prayer and expect power, favor, healings, anointing, the word, business and career, and marriage breakthroughs, prophecies, miracles, signs and wonders. Date, first Saturdays of every month. Time, 9 a.m. to 12 noon, UK time. Venue, House of Judah, The Happy Church, First Floor Palm Croy House, 387 London Road, Croydon, CRO 3PB UK. Visit www.houseofjudah.org.uk. UK. For further inquiries, call 0208-689-6010. Thank you for tuning in to Maximizing Destiny with Dr. Michael Hutton Wood from the House of Judah, the Leadership Factory, raising generational leaders, impacting the nations. We hope you have been blessed. 